On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team travels to the Dark Ages to investigate a castle with a cursed keeper. There is a suggestion that the activity produced in this castle is centered around me. Barry and Chris test their client in a 12th century dungeon. I'm seeing points of light. These seems to be the trigger mechanism. These things are happening too. While Joe and Scott find inhuman spirits amid human remains. Oh my God, it just felt like something like brushed against my head. And Paul and Susan are given the royal treatment in the white room. Did you hear that growl? What was that? Is their client the conduit for GHI's activity, or is it the castle rising? <sighs> Temperature just dropped. Holy crap. First time to England, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, then I would personally like to welcome you to my homeland. Are we to brush up on our English? Yes, I think actually it might be a good idea if we start brushing up on our English. Well, with brush up on the terminologies, I don't understand a lot of things that you say. What is, yeah, what is wrong with you, Scott? Just throw him in a boot. You say weird things. We should just totally lock him in the boot like the entire it. investigation. <laughs> Okay, folks, we have a, a great case coming up, and Susie's going to tell us all about it. Well, guys, we're going to head over to Castle Rising, which is located in Norfolk, England, one of the more popular 12th century castles here in England. And in the 13th century, it actually housed Queen Isabella, also known as the She-Wolf of France, because Ooh. of her fiery temper and amazingly good looks. People believe that Queen Isabella is still haunting the castle because they could hear the vicious screams coming from the castle's towers. Vicious screams? Whoa. There has been a considerable amount of phenomena being reported. Light anomalies, apparitions, and shadows. People are hearing footsteps, disembodied voices, and people have been pushed. Really? Yeah. Okay, guys, since one of the reports is that Isabella might be haunting the castle, I wanted to give you a little history on her. She was actually born in France, and from her birth, she was promised in marriage to King Henry II. She was married when she was 12. She was known for being well-educated, you know, very outspoken and beautiful. Okay, folks, there it is, just picking over the top of the hill on the left-hand side. Welcome to Castle Rising. Thank you. This is Chris. Hello, Chris. Please and this is Paul. Hi, Paul. Would you like to come in? Sure, yes. I've worked here for about nine years. I've personally experienced what I can only describe as paranormal activity, and lots of other people have reported it to me too. This is really quite strange, and I certainly can't explain what, what the problems are. There is a suggestion that the activity is centered around me. I'd like GHI to try and either prove that or find an alternative answer to the activity. Norman, what type of history has this location got? It goes back to Roman times, a Roman farmstead. Then the Normans arrive in 1066, and they start to build a castle in the middle 12th century. That's uh, 850 years old. This is the main reception room. And what type of activity is seen in, in, in this room? The big doors open on their own. I've seen them open on prone. Often, I find them wide open in the morning. They are quite a heavy door, Paul. Did you just close that I one? We can test. They are heavy doors. Heavy and latched and bolted. OK, Norman, uh, where to next? Top of the tower. Lead the way. OK. This is the white room. Queen Isabella, who's associated with this castle, the spirit of Isabella is apparently still here and there's tales of her screaming from the top of the battlements. And you sometimes can smell her perfume. My first question, I think, um, would be, why would she be screaming from the battlements? She's supposed to have murdered her own husband, had remorse, and is supposed to have gone mad. Right, this is the Great Hall basement. 
Above us would have been the floor to the Great Hall. I personally, on several occasions, heard footsteps come through this part of the building and went gone to investigate. There's no one there. Also up on the gallery above us appears to be an, an apparition which seems to hide and go from one side to the other of the passageway. Clearly, there was nobody around at the time. I was with a group of people. Room, we're down in the basement, coming up the stair with a spiral stairway. I had glanced up and saw a gentleman standing against the wall. To me, it was a man standing there, and I was going to be polite, and I was going to let him, you know, get in front of me. So I glanced back down, took another two steps, then he was just gone. He just wasn't there. Welcome to the dungeon. This is actually the oldest room in the entire building. It was the first thing that was built. One of the main effects I've had in this room are light anomalies. I looked up into the upper left-hand corner, and there were just little twinkles of, of blue light, kind of like pinpoints of blue light coming through. They lasted maybe 30 seconds or so, and then just kind of went away. Well, we've come back down in time. OK. This is here before the castle and is used as a parish church originally. The activity we get is physical grabbing of. I've experienced it towards the back, or rather the east end of the church. Other visitors have, have experienced similar kinds of things. So, Norman, this is, this is the east end. This is where the altar was, the original altar yeah, of the, the church. Far end, yeah. This is the oldest entrance to the site. This has been used since Roman time. Right. It would have also had a, a drawbridge. Right, OK. Now, what, what type of, of uh, paranormal phenomena has been witnessed here? We've got the sound of clinking armor, orders walk in file, walk in line, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But one of the best bits was a photograph. It revealed a horse underneath that arch. I just see something at the corner of my left eye. So that's why I, like, took the photograph. But then I. It's like this overwhelming feeling. You can't really, like, describe it. Um, something really big is there. So something's in front of me. You know, it was obviously there. Castle Raging really has a lot of planes of activity. We are breaking out everything that we have. We're battling against the weather. Um, it's coming in on us on all fronts. Norman, our client, seems to have a lot of activity circling around him. So we're going to incorporate him into some of the uh, investigation tonight and see if we can draw out anything else that uh, maybe is happening around him. OK, Paul, how's this setup going? Oh, we're good. We are ready to rock. Where have we got the cameras? OK, well, what we have here is the Great Hall basement area. We've got the Saxon Chapel yes. over the uh, back mm -hmm. there. Then what we've got is the dungeon area. We're actually using the full spectrum DVR along with the red lights. Then what we have is an IR camera based outside the location. We're actually looking at well, where the drawbridge would have been. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then what we're looking at here is the hallway by the white room. OK, let's get to it. Brian and Chris in the dungeon. If you are a prisoner, we don't care what you've done. We're not here to judge you. You will understand that we mean you no harm. And likewise, we appreciate it if you would mean us no harm. We're simply trying to make a bridge of communication. We understand that this is your space. Can you come out for us? I don't know, Bear. It seems pretty quiet. There's nothing going on. Let's bring in Norman. Norman seems to be a catalyst from what he was telling us uh, toward paranormal events. You OK? Chris and I wanted to explore the dungeon with Norman to see if we could get anything that would come out um, and show itself. Let's just check this. 60 degrees. We'd like to know who's in the room with us. We do not fear you, so please do not fear us. We want you to come out. Temperatures dropping around my phone. My hands. Please don't be afraid to come out. Temperatures just drop. <sighs> oh. What? 60 degrees has suddenly dropped to 47. Holy crap. Oh. What? 
60 degrees has suddenly dropped to 47. Holy crap. We were investigating with Norman in the dungeon of Castle Rising, and Norman had reported this unusual temperature drop. And I was amazed to see that it had actually dropped 13 degrees, and it coincided with what he was reporting to us. Who's in here? We're just trying to understand you. Okay. Chris, we're going to move out of here now. Okay. We'll monitor what's going on okay. for Command Central, okay? The whole idea of leaving Norman in there alone is to try to set up the situation as it would be every day. He's in this place all the time alone. We just felt that if there was something in there, it'd probably be more comfortable with him and might be more willing to come out if he's in there by himself. OK, now that the team have left us alone, do you recognize me? Do you know who I am? Would you like to make a sound? Show yourself as light. Can you produce the balls of light which we see in the castle in response to my voice? One of the things we used to check when we... It's a light. It's, it's those light emanations he's talking about. I'm seeing points of light quite, quite regularly. Little points of light. Clear there. That was a light in there. These things are happening too. But it took us removing ourselves from the room. Yeah. He seems to be the trucker mechanism. This is crazy. The main uh, response was dramatic drop in temperature. It started with my hands initially, and it certainly wasn't a draft through the door or anything like that. Okay. Right. Go. Sorry. Susan and I just investigated the bridge. We intend to try and recreate the photograph that has been identified as a horse. We wanted to see if we can come up with an alternative explanation as to why this mist would appear in the shape of a horse. When this photo was taken, it was taken on an incredibly cold night. Now, the weather is not exactly the same, but we did want to recreate that mist from your breath. So I managed to get my hands on a cup of hot water, and we used it to see if we could create a steam in front of the lens. Oh, that was a good one. I think it's kind of ran out of steam. Okay, right. Now I want to place this down here. Now, obviously, we've got to take into account that this may actually be a photograph of a horse. And if it is a horse, then who is perhaps riding this horse? So we're looking for perhaps a captain. Maybe are we looking for somebody who was a knight, somebody who would have been riding that horse? So EVP says important, Susan, we are on the bridge. Are there any officers here? If there's anybody who wishes to make themselves known, wishes to come forward, Now's your opportunity to do so. Can you please tell me what was your rank? Are you still protecting this castle? I think we're done here, don't you? Yes. EVP session then. This is Paul and Susan. We're at the bridge. Joan and I are investigating the Great Hall basement area to follow up on claims of footsteps heard above them, as well as reports of an apparition on the walkway uh, uh, above the, the particular basement area that we were in. We were told that you make appearances on this walkway. We'd love to see you appear for us. Queen Isabella, we implore you, could you please come forward? Did you hear that? That sounded to me like a footstep. It just sounded like one solitary footstep. No, I mean, every now and then I, I, I hear what sounds like somebody walking on wood, and I can't see anything. I hear that. See? I hear that. Right? That sounds like wood. Oh, my god. That was up here, though. Yeah. I don't see anything. Hello? Are you here with us? Sorry. 
Stay still for a second, because I, I think I hear voices, but I'm not sure. It's like light whispers, and it sounds like a female to me. You still hear it? No, but when I first heard it, I was facing this way. And it was in front of you or behind you? Could you tell? No, I couldn't. It sounded like it was just coming from that side. Are you behind us? Are you down here with us? I felt like somebody tapped me on my left shoulder. Wow. Stay still for a second, because I, I think I hear voices, but I'm not sure. It's like light whispers. It sounds like a female to me. Are you behind us? Are you down here with us? I felt like somebody tapped me on my left shoulder. Wow. During our investigation in the Great Hall basement, I felt a tap on my shoulder, and I immediately turned to my left, and uh, I didn't see anybody when I turned to see where Scott was. He was to my right. Did you tap me? Am I imagining that? Did you hear that? I did hear that. That was a loud wood. Like, it was like loud. Somebody was took a, a step. Very loud. And there's nobody on the catwalk. What the hell? Somebody's still up there. I was just trying to see if there's anything like hanging from there or something that would have moved to the brain. Chris and I went back into the dungeon where previously we were investigating with Norman, our client. We didn't it looked like there was less beams stopped in there. We wanted to see if we could figure out what caused the strange lights we were seeing on the DVR. Anything. I'll just stick this thermometer outside and get a, a temperature reading of the ambient temperature. We also wanted to see if we could recreate the temperature drop we witnessed with Norman. And now the temperature has dropped. It's 51 degrees. That's fine. Since we initially had our investigation. So... Is a breeze enough to make that thing go down, though? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what to do, Chris. Um, open the door, and we'll let in that full breeze and see what happens. Uh-huh. Do anything? No. It's blowing a little bit. That's still, not crazy right now. Still stand 52.7. I'm not really sure what happened in there, but we weren't able to get it to happen again when we were in there alone. No, I thought to myself, maybe there's a draft coming down from up above. Yeah. It's actually warmer. <laughs> it's a vaulted ceiling. Yeah, that wouldn't make any sense. Unless... What the hell? What? I felt my hair get pulled. There's nothing up there, right? Nope. There's only your hairband. So roll your head a couple of times and see if you can get it to happen again. That's what I was doing, but... Something weird happened with that. I don't even know that what I'd catch it on, unless I caught it on the zipper. No. I don't know. Okay. Wait, what's behind me? Nothing. Yeah, I don't know. Strange. Because my hair is in a ponytail, I figured maybe my hair got caught on a zipper or got caught on my clothing. So that was the only thing I could come up with um, that, that was rational and normal. Did it happen again? It didn't happen again, but I mean, there's a good chance it could have just gotten caught on my coat. Ever strange. Ever strange. Well, I'd 
like to cordially invite any and all spirits of the castle to join us in this room. We have one particular guest here with us that we know you're very familiar with. Paul and I went to investigate with Norman in the white room where there are these claims of these phantom smells of perfume. And a lot of people believe that when they smell this, they think it could possibly be Queen Isabella's spirit. If you are here with us, can you please introduce yourself? Were you in fact royalty? Are you Queen Isabella? If there are any spirits here in the castle, we invite you into the white room. If you'd like to enter the doorway, if permission to come through the doorway, pass me or maybe affect some of the equipment we have tonight we are here as your friends can you just give us a sign that you're here with us please you know this is the last chance you'll be able to communicate with us Did you hear that growl? What was that? We are here as your friends. Can you just give us a sign that you're here with us, please? Did you hear that growl? What was that? How are you feeling, Mama? Really dizzy. Really, really, really dizzy. Was that you, Paul? I haven't said anything. I've done anything. What I thought I heard was like some deep bellowing kind of sound. And it was on the walkway. I thought I heard it sounded like a growl at that point, and it was unusual. We were hearing little things shuffling and such, and it seemed like some of these sounds were so light and so far that they kept eluding us. I keep hearing something down that end, too. Down near the hall. Around the corner. It's like a shuffling. Yeah. And I heard it a few times. This leads directly out door. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's weird. Luckily, Paul and I came well equipped. We had everything from the RTEVP, a full spectrum video cam, a mini DV camera, and all of these had audio on them. So hopefully, we were able to pick up on these things that kept eluding us. Are you getting any wind through there at all? There is a draft coming through the door. The door doesn't seem to be budging at all. Chris and I went to the reception room where the doors are said to open by themselves. I mean, do they naturally want to swing? Is there like some sort of pitch to the floor that would cause them to do that? No, oh, naturally wants to swing shut. And they're yeah. found open, right? That's right, yeah. So that wouldn't make sense. What about that side? Oh, sorry. Sorry? Again, Ashley wants to swing shut. These things are heavy. They're not easily moved. And when you do open them all the way, they naturally close. They don't swing open. Let's close it over a bit, Chris, again. And um, put the latch down okay. on this time. I'm going to hit it a couple of times and see if maybe a strong breeze might latch it up. OK. Ready? Yep. This door, if properly latched, won't open. And even if it's not latched properly, I can't see any reason for it to open. OK, well, let's move on and see what else we can find. All right. What is that thing you're holding? That's crazy. Joe and I were investigating Rising Castle Dungeon. 
We knew that there was already a camera stationary in there. However, Joe brought his DV camera. Um, I brought the, the Mel meter as well as the 360 audio recorder. That's insane. Are there any prisoners in here that were chained by these heavy boulders? Wow, look at these shackles. Can't imagine having to drag them on your feet. Mm -mm. Damn, it's gonna be like 50 pounds or so. I mean, I could barely lift that up. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. That's insane. There's, there's stuff all over this place. Pretty weird. It's very weird. What is this stuff? Are they labeled? Castle Rising, Bones. Oh, really? That could be some of your problem right there. Wow, imagine that. These are more bones. Yeah, see, that, that can't be good. Oh, my God. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I don't wanna touch it. Is that a human bone? Yeah. Ugh, that's so gross. Holy cow. <gasps> Ew! Huh. What Those is that? Teeth. That's a jaw. Yes, it is. I see teeth. Oh. Messed up. These are filled with bones, Joe. They're filled with bones. Bones that have not been buried. And if there's a haunting in here, I can kind of see why. <sighs> Whoever's in this room, or whatever's in this room, are these your remains? Are you in here with us? Do we need to be afraid of you? If these are your remains, and you remain here, I'm sorry for that. What's the matter? It just felt like something like brushed against my head. But there are no spider webs. It felt like a, it you. felt like just like a like you walked in something like. I still kind of feel like it's on me now. Wow. Is there anybody here? Did you touch my friend Scott? Are you angry that he opened these boxes? No, oh, not for God's sakes. While we were down there, Scott felt something brush against his neck, almost liken it to uh, cobwebs on the back of his neck. Now, while we were rummaging through some of the artifact cases, some of the containers had uh, bones, which was kind of odd. Well, if you are here, please don't follow any of us out. That's that's good. Yeah, I'm not comfortable in here, actually. OK. Let's get on out. All right, NDVP session, Joe and Scott. Let's get back in here, Chris. Church. Barry and I decided to do a thermal sweep of the grounds and we headed down to the external chapel. That's one of the oldest sections of the property. Claims here are kind of hard to debunk though. How do you debunk somebody being attacked? If there's an entity here which is associated with the the older religions, can we ask you to come forward? Some phenomenon which has been reported here are, for instance, are flashes of light. Are you responsible for those? Why don't you step forward to us? Step into this building, these ruins. Make yourself known to us. That was odd. It sounded like a buzzing went from over here and around here. You didn't hear that? No. I hope that recording advice got that. No footsteps. Did you hear that? I, I keep hearing this. It's like a buzzing or a humming, um, and it comes in waves. For a second, I hear it sound like. But. I don't know. Make yourself known to us. Barry and 
I did have a few weird things happen. He heard what he thought was humming. I heard what I thought was footsteps. I know that the audio recorder was running the entire time, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out in the analysis. I'm not seeing anything unusual here. Nothing really showed up in the thermal camera. So from the exterior chapel, we moved over to the bridge where this horse was supposedly shown up in the picture. No, we also need to do a thermal on the drawbridge. Mm-hmm. With the uh, horse. With the horse's scene, yeah. Hold on a second. Chris, what's that? What the hell is that? We also need to do a thermal on the drawbridge. Mm-hmm. With the uh, horse. With the horses seen, yeah. Hold on a second. Chris, what's that? What the hell is that? Something you've seen there. That was odd. Mm -hmm. I thought I seen something in the arch. Are you seeing maybe the trees or something on the other side of it? I would doubt it. The angle I don't think is correct. I'll go a bit further. Barry for Paul. Go ahead. Well, where are you? Uh, we just left the white room. We're now actually in the entrance area. We're just about to uh, head down the uh, the stairs. Great. Barry for Joe. Where are you? Joe and Scott, we're heading to Command Central in just about a minute. We thought we heard a footstep at the bridge. Oh, give us one minute, please. Well, that's who we were seeing on the thermal. Yeah. Joe and Scott on the bridge. It was just an unusual blob. Now, is there anybody here with us right now? We would like to give you the opportunity to come forward and make yourself known to us. Paul and I went to go investigate the Great Hall basement. Some of the claims are that people are hearing these footsteps, as well as the feelings of being watched. See that? Getting anything interesting? Maybe. It's actually up on the walkway. Is there somebody standing there almost blocking out a light? You see anything in the IR? No. And keep snapping away then and just see if it makes an appearance. Did you hear that? It sounded like someone who's walking up the stairs. Yep. It sounds like somebody running away. It really does. Somebody running away wearing a cloak. Yes. Like the dress? Yeah. And the claim being that they hear the, the woman's dress. That's true. The fabric sounds of yeah. movement and fabric. Do you want to just quickly check the stairwell? Yes. Just with the camera. At one point, Paul heard what sounded like footsteps coming from the spiral staircase, where I went after it to see if I could hear anything. Hello? Paul, did you just make that noise? No, I haven't made any noise at all. I'm hearing movement up here. Anything? I'm trying to listen out for something. I just went quiet all of a sudden. I've been staring at the walkway. I'm not seeing anything on there. I don't know. I heard something in the spiral staircase, and it did sound somewhat like footsteps, but then I lost it when I came upon the white room. This is one of those cases where we're going to have to see um, if our audio recorder did, in fact, capture uh, anything additional. OK, guys, um, let's get uh, the equipment broken down and uh, get out of here before the sun rises. OK? Yeah. We just finished the investigation of Kessel Rising. I can hear the birds singing on their morning call, and so we could not push it any further. We were using many different types of equipment. We were running a full DVR system to all areas of the castle where there were reports of visual activity. It's going to be really interesting to see what comes out of analysis. I am interested in the experiment that we conducted with Norman in the dungeon. There were some interesting things happening, and there seemed to be these unusual light anomalies that started to appear as Norman was in there by himself. So it's going to be interesting to see what we can make of those. So we're just about to go into analysis of Castle Rising. 
I'm really excited about this one. Um, we had a great investigation. We heard weird noises from bellowing to footsteps. Uh, we saw shadows and strange light anomalies on the DVR. Um, Chris and Barry witnessed a 13 degree drop in temperature and four different people actually felt like they'd been touched by something in the castle. I have an audio clip from Joe and Scott. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are investigating in the Great Hall basement and you guys hear and react to the sound of a footstep and you say it's coming from that walkway. Yeah. Take a listen. All right. Sure. Did you tap me? Am I imagining that? Wow. Yeah. Because I remember we were down there and we heard snippets of what sounded like something walking on the wood mm. above us. We were like, that's a bang. Like, that sounded like somebody was like that. Well, I mean, it's good that we caught the sound. It was very faint. And there are probably a hundred other things it could have been environmentally that could have caused that. And being as faint as it is, it's certainly not something I don't think we can we can take yeah, to Norman. Um, but it is interesting you're saying that it sounded like somebody was walking along mm -hmm. that, that walkway because during the investigation that Susan and I actually had down in the, in the same area, it did at one point, it looked like to me that somebody had actually walked along that walkway because there was, there was something there. So unfortunately, I didn't see that on the DVR. Okay. Now we take a look at this. This is actually the full spectrum DVR camera. Now it's in the dungeon, okay? There's no light in there and there's nobody investigating, okay? Wow. Oh, okay. That's really crazy looking. I have no idea what that is. No, I've never seen anything like that. Norman, it's good to see you again. Nice to see you too. First of all, um, we wanted to, uh, to talk to you about this picture of the, the, the horse's rear that was taken at the, at the front gate. Lots of hollies, hollies, hoves. We went back to try and explore and understand possibly what was going on and use different uh, filming techniques to see if we could try and capture something. We just weren't getting anything close enough to understand what was going on. With that, of course, we move on yeah. to the other pieces of evidence that we've collected. So this is shortly before Barry and I left you to do your EVP session solo. And you're gonna hear yourself talking, but then something or someone else chimes in. This is nothing to do with the a door open or lock. Go home. I've had that before. A door open. A door open. A door open. It's the kind of thing that we we we're capturing increasingly yes. on site. Now, of course, tying in with this, Norman, we use cameras on GHI that see into the normal spectrum and the ultraviolet spectrum, just beyond the human ability of, of sight. And we wanted to share with you several pieces of data that we had collected. What we see here is you being lit up by an infrared uh, light. Now, if you continue to watch, you'll notice this over here. Are you able to see those little bursts of light? Of light? Yeah. What we see is collapses of energy fields. Cameras are able to catch these things as they close down. We took all the bursts of light and superimposed them onto the photograph. What we have here are the time codes yes. um, of when they appear in our system. 11.28, nine minutes past midnight, 1.15, 1.49, 2.14. 2.14. Seems to confirm exactly what they've been saying for ages, that this is real. Mm -hmm. This is a real phenomenon. Stuff is actually out there. Mm -hmm. It's definitely out there. Over to the right-hand side, where these sparks of light appear, um, there is a series of boxes with bones. Are those all animal bones? No, no I, do, I actually do have a record of human bones, but I don't know which box they're in. The reason I say that is because when Scott opened the box, he started to feel very ill. Um, in fact, physically, he looked very ill. You know, it was something that shook Scott up, I have to say. Did it? Yes. But staying in the dungeon, of course, the video evidence didn't stop just there. We wanted to see, OK, what would happen if we took all the light out? What would the Lulux cameras in that type of environment capture? Now, bearing in mind, this is in complete darkness in the dungeon. So we can see that's almost 10 feet yes. off the ground. Yes, it is. 
We don't know what this is. It's just, it's just a concentration of light, roughly where I sat. And that's what got us, was how concentrated it was. Also, we, when you think about where in the room it is, the only opening for light to get in is that door. There's no windows, there's no other openings. You don't get light in the dungeon, it's always known. Now, this is what happens when our lights shine in from outside. Okay. Oh, that's not... that's just nothing like. So, I mean, even if light were coming through the door, I mean, you see exactly where it falls. There's no way it could go over that far. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> yes. We had a ton of cameras set up around this place, and one of the areas we covered was the store. Do you see that? Yeah. It was great to be able to see that, uh, that the door itself at the very top just inches open. <laughs> yes. You know, Barry and I were up here and we checked the door out and the first thing we did was open the doors up and see if they'd naturally swing shut. We were trying to see if there was some sort of pitch to the floor. We noticed they're very heavy, they're hard to move. Once it's latched, it's latched. So I don't see how the wind would build up enough to be able to blow the doors open. So we have no idea it, what it really, happened. It really was a mystery for that. That's one. really interesting. That's really interesting. Um, you know, you reported to us that you come in early in the morning um, and the doors open. Um, that door opened at around 10 minutes to five in the morning uh, so it stayed it was fine the entire evening it was just that particular moment that it decided to open i'm delighted that you brought all of this equipment and, and you've managed to capture something which definitely exists i know when we we came in you had two questions for us really is it the castle that's haunted or are you being haunted and honestly i don't feel that it's you um, the reason that I say that is because a lot of the stuff that we're catching was in an empty room. Yes. So it just seems like whatever's going on here, it, it seems more tied to the castle and its so history. it's already here. It's already here and it's probably just used to you at this point because you're here a lot. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's telling you to work too much, you need a vacation. It's not you that no. that's haunted. It is the castle. It is the castle. But uh, for now, Chris and I, of course, have to move on. But it has been a great pleasure to come here to England and, and investigate castle writing. Thank you very much. And take care, Norman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm actually quite relieved to discover that the haunting is not to do with me. That takes an awful lot of weight off my shoulders, to be honest with you. It's um, a relief in many ways. Well, Norman seemed very happy with what we had to show him. And a lot of the things that we caught backed up his experiences. We were able to come forward and say that there's no signs of Queen Isabella. I think her and I would have gotten along. I don't think I could have got along with I don't think he could have handled the two of us in one car. Oh, hell no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Chris, let's get back and round up the team and get ready for the next one. <laughs>